If you are a beginner to Godot and its scripting language GDScript, then this video is for you. Today we'll take a look at variables, what they are, and how to use them. What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. There are probably many of you out there who want to try a hand at making games, but are scared off because you're not familiar with a particular scripting language, or maybe just scripting and coding in general. If that sounds like you, then hopefully I can help you out. This video will be the first part in a series of tutorials designed for those of you who are beginners to scripting. Today we're starting off with variables. So what is a variable? Well variables are basically placeholders for different types of data whose value can be changed any number of times. There are many different data types, but for today we're just going to take a look at some of the more common ones. You can see here what we have to start off with. There's a character with a box of text that we're going to use to demonstrate the effects of our variables. If we jump into our code, you'll see that there are a few lines of code here that you're probably not familiar with, but don't worry about them for now as they're not relevant to our discussion about the variables. We're going to start off with a string. A string is a series of one or more characters that are interpreted as a word or group of words. Really quickly, we can use a string to change the text in the text box of our character. We write a quick little sentence and surround it in double quotes so that the game engine knows that it's a string. Then we can go ahead and run our game. We can see now that our character's text has changed. Great! Now let's use a variable to change our text. First we need to declare our variable and give it a name. We use the keyword var to let the engine know that we're creating a variable and then we give it a name. For this example, the name will be my underscore first underscore string. Before we move on, there are a few rules to variable names. Now a variable name must not start with a letter or the underscore character, which in turn means that a variable name cannot start with a number. If we go ahead and put a number in here, you'll see that it produces an error. The variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores, that is, letters A to Z, 0 through 9, and the underscore character. This means that you can't use any other symbols like maybe the asterisk or a pound or hash symbol, etc. This is because those symbols have special meanings and their own purposes in the scripting language. Lastly, variable names are case sensitive. This means that the lowercase my first string will be recognized as a different variable from an uppercase my first string. With that being said, let's go ahead and set the value of our variable to a string. So here we can set my first string equals I think I like variables, do they taste good? Then we can use this variable to change the character's text. We'll get rid of the text that's already in there and we'll replace it with the variable my first string. Then we can run our game to see what we've done. Great, so we've managed to change and replace our character's text with the contents of our my first string variable. Now that we've looked at the string data type, let's go ahead and look at some numeric data types starting with integers. An integer is a positive or negative whole number. Once again, we'll declare our variable with var, we'll call this variable integer underscore variable, and we'll set it equal to 100. Notice here that we didn't use the double quotes because we don't want a string, we want a number. While we're at it, let's also make another variable that contains a different type of number, a float. A float is a positive or negative number that has a decimal point. So we can say var float variable equals 100.5. Then we can add these variables to our text box. Don't worry about this line of code here as you don't need to understand it right now, but if you're curious, all it does is it simply adds a new line character so that the text that comes next will be on a brand new line. Next we'll add our integer variable to the text box. Next we can run our game, but if we run the game like this there will be an error as we'll see. The reason for this error is because the text box can only display strings, but our integer variable is actually a number. We'll go into further detail about this in a future video, but for now, 
I'll just go ahead and fix this by converting the integer variable to a string as it's added to our text box. I'll simply do that with the string method as you see here. Now if we run our game, we'll be able to see what's changed. And we can see that the engine converts our integer of 100 to a string of 100 and adds it to the text box, which is why we can see it. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our float variable because it's also a type of number that needs to be converted to a string. After that, let's run our game and see our changes. And just like with our integer variable, our float variable has also been converted to a string and added into the text box. So in summary, a variable is a placeholder for many different data types. We declare a variable with the keyword var and the variable names must abide by the naming rules. If you like today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. The sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page, so if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. Thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.